We're going to talk about how to visualize minor chords on the guitar neck in a way that's similar to cage, that's built off cage. But if you've ever studied the caged system, you're gonna quickly realize that cage doesn't work for minor because what the fuck is an open C minor chord, right? Or an open G minor chord, those things don't exist. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take a look at the major caged shapes and see how we can translate them into their minor counterparts. And those are the basic shapes we're going to use to map out the guitar neck going up. So let's take the key of F just because it starts right here in the bottom but does not have any open strings. So the first chord in it is sort of that cowboy E shape. To make that into a minor shape, all we gotta do is this, right? It goes from F to F minor. Now the next one is a little bit trickier. I have this D shape right here. To make that into an F minor instead of an F major, I have to flatten the third. But to visualize that across six strings, I also have to do it on the bottom. And not forget that that note here also moved. Basically all my A's turned to A flat. So I have this shape. That's sort of how I visualize my triad arpeggio. So that'll be shape two. Now, how do you grab that? Well, there are a few ways that I like to visualize that chord all living in the same area. One, two, three, or just that, even this. It's all a part of that same arpeggio area, what we would consider the D minor shape. Now, we move into the C minor shape. So where's F major? It's this thing. Now it's trickier to make those thirds flat because now it's a little stretchy. And you can't really play a lot of it as a chord. So this is a chord that's hidden here. This is a chord that's hidden here. Maybe this. That area is a little bit more enigmatic because it's very hard to see. It's that famous Engve Malmsteen arpeggio though, right? It's right there. But that's that C minor area that we gotta teach ourselves to see. And maybe this is the most usable shape in it. The next one is probably the most familiar. We have the A major shape for the F to the A minor shape for the F, right? That's pretty easy to see. Now the next one, we have that G shape for the F. And how do we turn that into a G minor? Check this out. Maybe this, maybe this. All good grips, right? They're all right there. You want to visualize each one of these fives as areas for a minor chord. So F minor, E shape. F minor D shape, F minor C shape, F minor A shape, F minor G shape. Now, next step is maybe to arpeggiate each one of them inside their respective areas. One, two, three, four, and finally five. Up to this point, we just used triads, three notes, F, A flat, C. Now I'm going to add another note. I'm gonna add the seventh. So now I have an F minor major seven sound. So if I had this shape, I'm starting to add E's to it. Nice sound, right? So what does the arpeggio look like? That's, you wanna start with the arpeggio. So in this shape, and in each one of them, now you can grab wherever it appears, right? Next shape, the D minor shape. So when I see it as an arpeggio, when I try to play chords in it, if I really have that arpeggio shape down, it, I, they're all just under my fingers. I can just grab them. Right? 
all these shapes. Next one, the C minor type shape. Check this out. Here's this one. Here's the last one. So now I have arpeggios for this one chord going all the way up the neck, but in a way that I can remember because it's attached to this information that I can retain. Next stage is to maybe look at an F minor 7. So an F minor 7 has a flatted 7 instead of a 7. So now I have F, A flat, C, E flat. Let's map that out across the neck. I have this. 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 This guy. And finally this. repeats. So those are five shapes for minor sevens and minor major sevens, but all rooted in those cowboy type chords similar to caged but adapted to the minor tonalities. The problem with caged, again, is that they only fit the major tonalities. So now let's try to throw all this information in a key. Now let's take a look at a major key like C major. Inside C major, I have three minor chords. I have a D minor seven, I have an E minor seven, and I have an A minor seven. The two minor, the three minor, and the six minor. So again, try to see the overlap. From the bottom of the neck, you have that D minor with a C minor shape. Maybe go into that E minor with a D minor shape. And that A minor with a G minor shape. So that's area one. Let's say I'm going here. I have this A minor shape for the D minor. I have the C minor shape for the E minor. And I have this E minor shape for the A minor. As I go up the neck, I can just continue doing the same kind of thing. So G minor shape for the D minor. That A minor shape for the E minor. And then I have that D minor shape for the A minor. If I keep going up, I have that E minor shape for the D minor. Have that G minor shape for the E minor, that C minor shape for the A minor, and then finally here I have that D minor shape for the D minor, that E minor shape for the E minor, and that A minor shape for the A minor. So you can really play all the notes of a major scale in kind of an interesting way just by knowing those three arpeggios, but they're really gonna help you get your bearings. That minor major seven we talked about could be found inside harmonic minor, melodic minor, and harmonic major, so it's really good to know too. A really good exercise would be maybe to connect each one of these arpeggios up and down the neck in every key, just so you're really comfortable with those shapes. Remember when you're practicing, let's say I'm taking this shape for just like an A minor shape, D minor. I don't wanna just play it up and down. It's very important, let's say I'm jamming on it and I'm trying to apply it, I don't wanna go. That's sort of making a lick out of a shape. You want to use every part of that arpeggio shape as a potential starting point to where you can visualize yourself just 
starting to play, starting to improvise. So you just choose an arbitrary place, like the B string, and then I go. The D string. What you really want to do is start on every single point of every single shape in your practice to where you actually build the freedom that it takes to improvise and you don't have to just kind of jump to the beginning of where you've practiced the shape in your mind. People who practice from the bottom to the top play from the bottom to the top. There's no getting around that. So you can't practice that way and hope to play with something that looks like freedom. Okay. Subscribe to this channel. We have a ton of content coming. Uh, press the like button, leave a comment, tell us what you think about everything, uh, ring the bell, join our Patreon, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.